is a recording of this year's virtual residency fair. We'd like to take the time to thank the programs that volunteered their time to present to this year's applicants. This year's PMNR Scholars Virtual Residency Fair is supported by PMNR Recap and Ultrasound Guidance. PMNR Recap is the leading resource for your physiatry board preparation, clinical preparation, audition rotations, and beyond. PMNR Recap offers 35 hours of review videos, hundreds of review questions, and oral board cases to help you become the best physiatrist that you can be. Head to pmnrrecap.com to learn more. Ultrasound Guidance is the innovative new on online ultrasound learning platform that gives you instant access to expert instruction. With rapid scans and complete scans of every joint and peripheral nerve, Ultrasound Guidance is the perfect way to jumpstart your MSK ultrasound learning. Visit ultrasoundguidance.com to learn more. Hi, can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes. Great. So um, thanks for joining us. My name is Michelle Stombo. I am one of the PGY4 chief residents at the University of South Florida. Um, I'm also joined by my uh, co-chief residents, uh, Matt Wilhelm and Kareem Casey, who are going to be speaking a little bit later. So I'm going to talk a little bit about our program and um, we'll try and leave some room for questions at the end. So just a few highlights about our program. I know. Can Kareem advance it? Thanks. Um, yeah, so it's a categorical program. Um, we're located in Tampa, Florida, which is just an hour and a half from Orlando. Um, we have three residents per year, and we're actually increasing to four. We were the first program in Florida. Um, we have a di diverse training program, and we also have fellowship opportunities that we're going to speak on later and kind of list them out for you. Um, Dr. McCarthy, I would say, is one of our highlights, as well as all of our attendings and faculty, so we'll talk a little bit about her, um, but mainly her credentials are on the next slide, um, but I would just say that um, she is a mentor for me personally, but also um, professionally, and um, she's available for us um, really anytime we need her 24-7. She's taken our feedback um, every year and incorporated it into our curriculum, so she's uh, just a great asset to our program. Um, we also have Sharina, who's our program coordinator. Um, she's also available if we have any questions or concerns. Um, so these are our clinical sites. Um, we do a lot of our training in, at the beginning in the first years at the James Haley VA Hospital. Um, we also rotate at Tampa General Hospital, uh, Moffitt, and our new rehab hospital that we'll talk about. Um, and we also have camels as a learning opportunity that we'll talk about as well. So just to kind of discuss our curriculum, um, it's pretty much the whole first year is at the James E. Haley VA. Um, we do four months of internal medicine, um, which I think everyone in our um, program would agree is um, sufficient. And we all feel like very well um, able to handle any like medical needs that are on our rehab floor. Um, we also, I should mention that I know that there are some programs that have hospitalists on everyone, um, which we do when we're at TGH, we have medicine on every patient. Um, but when we're at the VA, we actually are, um, work the primary and the medicine, and then we can consult medicine if there's any like more complicated patients. Um, so we get the opportunity to kind of manage medical needs, um, in some aspects. And then, um, we also have medicine following in our more acute um, hospitals. Um, and then going back to our intern year, it's pretty well-rounded. So, and it's really just focused on rehab, which is great. So a lot of our, our months are with the consulting services like neurology, infectious disease, um, rheumatology, um, all, all um, services that we would consult if needed when we're on the PMNR like rehab, um, inpatient rehab. So uh, you get to kind of, uh, know them and uh, work with the attendings there and um, kind of understand when an appropriate consult is. Um, so that's our PGY1. PGY2 uh, is also kind of split a lot at the VA. Um, our, our core rotations are in two month blocks. It's spinal cord injury, um, traumatic brain injury, general rehab. Um, we also do procedure months like EMG um, and ultrasound guided um, MSK. During your intern year, you'll do a lot of um, landmark-based kind of like blind injections, and then you kind of hone in on ultrasound as a PGY2, which is really nice. 
Um, we also have rotations in PGY2 um, at Moffitt in palliative medicine, um, which is a little bit of pain. And then um, like throughout the rotations, we have um, concussion clinic and spasticity clinic, which are both actually with Dr. McCarthy, which is really nice. Um, PGY3, uh, we go to TGH. And I think Kareem um, has been adjusting some of the schedule going forward, um, but we may have TGH earlier in future years. Um, but right now we have TGH in third year. Um, and we do adult consults. Um, we also do um, pediatric con consults and inpatient rehab. Um, and then we have our uh, standalone um, TGH rehab in fourth year. Um, but third year we have uh, our neuro, our, sorry, um, neurosurgery and interventional pain rotations. And then um, we also have uh, interventional pain with Dr. Battis. Um, so you get plenty of fluoro and pain um, exposure. Um, and then fourth year, um, a lot of those same rotations um, and TGH rehab, which is kind of our more rigorous rotation um, right now is fourth year. I think when we add it um, to an earlier, to earlier years, we're gonna have a senior with you. So like to start, so you won't be kind of thrown in alone. And then going forward. Okay, okay. so. Kareem is gonna talk about our, our core sites. Yeah, so uh, like Michelle said, you know, the first two years at our program, you'll be spending most of it at the VA. Um, with that being said, our VA rehab side of the hospital is brand new um it opened in 2014 so you know as you can see from the pictures a lot of a lot of the equipment that we have there is state of the art um typically this covers three major units one being the tbi polytrauma unit which also has some subsection units as well uh, there's the general rehab floor here we cover you know amputees orthopedics spine surgery strokes cardiac issues covid uh, when it was more prominent and then we have the spinal cord injury floors as well. Uh, and we cover the rehab side of, of the spinal cord uh, injury inpatient unit. Also our, you know, our um, VA is an amputee center of excellence. So we actually set the kind of the standard for all the other VAs in the country in terms of how to deal with amputees in terms of like prosthetics and orthotics. And we have just a phenomenal team in that regard. Some of the other kind of ancillary services they have at the VA um, at our VA is we have kind of this virtual reality rehab uh, vestibular rehab, you have the C-mill, the Theristride, um, just, you know, equipment to help patients get back on their feet, as well as an aquatic treadmill, which they love. Um, we have adaptive sports, driver training, and I'm probably missing a couple, but we have, you know, as you can see, the building there is it's, uh, pretty new, pretty nice. Um, just a couple more pictures here. Kind of this left picture is uh, it's what we call Main Street. It's kind of the center hub of where all the, the rehab uh, building. And then on the right side, you have the, the Theristride. Um, it's just one of these assisted treadmills to help patients get back on their feet um, after maybe spinal cord injury or, or whatnot. Um, and just to heart back on here real quick, uh, the TBI polytrauma floors will be there for three months as PGY2s. General rehab floors will be there as three months for PGY2s. And then same with the SCI floors as well. So you'll spend a, a fair amount of your PGY2 year here at the, at the James Haley VA. Um, next, we have Tampa General Hospital. Um, as you can see, we have a beautiful hospital right, right on the bay. It's the private hospital, over 1,000 beds, level one trauma center, number three hospital in Florida, top 100 in the U.S. Um, it's one of five ABA burn centers in Florida and one of two pediatric burn centers. There also is a fair amount of transplants. This is where we have our pediatric inpatient rehab unit um, where we do consults as well and then the adult inpatient rehab consults. Um, and that's to determine, you know, if patients are going to inpatient rehab, which is our new building, which just opened up in 2022, which is a joint venture between Tampa General Hospital and Kindred Health. Uh, this is kind of state-of-the-art building, about 80 beds, inpatient rehab hospital, kind of treating a, a broad, wide range of conditions. And kind of, as you can see from the pictures, you know, it's, it's still very new. Um, Dr. Wilhelm, actually, the one, our other chief who's on here, who will talk to you guys in a little bit. He was the one of the first residents to kind of start on this unit, and our class was kind of the first ones to start on these units. So um, there's a little bit of growing pains, but we got to a point where this is probably one of our stronger rotations in terms of kind of gaining that independence and being able to 
practice well in the future. Um, another hospital where we do kind of some core rotations, including mostly our, our interventional pain rotations, but as well as neurosurgery and um, palliative care. Uh, this is the Moffitt Cancer Center. This is one of the top 10 hospitals uh, in the US for cancer um, for over 20 years. It's really kind of state of the art. They're doing cutting edge therapies all the time. Patients are on you know, the, the latest generation of clinical trials um, to take care of their cancer. And um, probably, I think most of us would agree, one of our favorite rotations here with Dr. Ibanez in the interventional pain suites where we kind of help these cancer patients, you know, have a better quality of life uh, through, you know, our different modalities with uh, interventional pain. Um, then we have what we call CAMELS, the Center of Advanced Medical Learning and Simulation. This is a new building as well. Um, also kind of state-of-the-art clinical environment. This is dedicated to help medical students, surgical residents, other residents as well, including us, um, just learn different skills and techniques and gain those hands-on um, skills. Uh, for us, we get to go down here with uh, Dr. Jeffries. He's one of the kind of uh, ultrasound guru, especially at, at diagnostics. And we're getting, uh, we're actually having another cadaver lab coming up with him in a couple months. And we already had one already earlier in the year where we just get to kind of, you know, practice a couple diagnostic techniques, also practice our ultrasound guided injections. Um, and yeah, this is in kind of in downtown Tampa. So it's uh, also really nice building in a really nice area. And musculoskeletal experience uh, here on the left, you see Dr. BC and that's me putting the ultrasound probe on, on Dr. Wilhelm. We'll talk to you guys in a bit. Uh, we get four dedicated months with Dr. BC there on, on the Sano site uh, ultrasound machine. Uh, we're kind of spoiled. It's a very, very nice machine. Um, and we get a lot of diagnostic MSK ultrasound as well as, uh, you know, this really is, it's an injection clinic to help patients kind of before surgery and see if we can get some some pain relief, some improved function before surgery. So we do a lot of corticosteroids, a lot of visco supplementation, PRP. Uh, we also do a couple of nerve blocks here and there, and trigger points and um, shockwave therapy. And I think, I think Michelle and Matt would also agree that this is probably one of our stronger rotations in terms of just getting that real world hands-on experience. Um, and, you know, we knock out procedures like nobody's business. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it's 25 peripheral joint injections and like 10 under ultrasound for your requirements. Uh, you mean you'd probably finish those in uh, in a week in this clinic. Um, so other important details when it comes to this call, call schedule, uh, as a PGY1, as an intern, there is no no call necessarily that you're taking at home. It's only a long call day when you're on internal medicine on wards, and this is every fifth day. And this just means that you'll take um, admissions after 2 p.m. Um, uh, and there's five other medicine teams, so they all rotate. So that's why it's every fifth day. They just tend to be a, a little bit longer days, you know, internal medicine wards, it's, it, that's a VA, um, so it's a little bit slower pace, but they can be, you know, longer days uh, in that situation. Uh, as a PGY2, you'll be taking call on the rehab floors, and this is typically about one weekend um, or and three to four weekdays per month. As a PGY3, your call comes down a little bit, one weekend and three to four weekdays um, per month, and then um, uh, one weekend or three to four weekdays, I apologize. And then as a PGY4, it's just one weekday call per month. All of us being PGY4s, having that one weekday call per month, it's, uh, it's quite nice to get to this point where you kind of get to relax a little bit more. And the weekday call is just from 4.30 p.m. till 8 a.m. the next day. You take it at home. You know, the nurses are pretty good at making sure that, you know, they call you for uh, what's important. Um, in addition to that, we have protected time every week on Thursday afternoons for didactics. Um, we have lectures kind of from all over. Um, come to our, our, our nice little room in the VA and, and give us lectures. This includes uh, Dr. Badham for EMGs, but we also get a lot of MSK ultrasound training, Botox training, all that kind of stuff. Um, we also run Journal Club and MSK lectures as well. As far as the staff goes, you know, uh, being a smaller program, you're going to get a lot of one-to-one -one time with the attendings, which has its pros in that they're always teaching you and they're always there to answer questions for you. And it's nice that we have our didactics every Thursday together and we have, we really do have this kind of tight knit family feel. Um, and you also have open communication with all the nursing staff and therapists and whatnot. As far as, far as fellowship opportunities, um, our biggest fellowship opportunity is probably the interventional pain. We have, you know, a fair amount of residents recently have gone into the interventional pain route, but we also have, in addition to that, spinal cord injury, um, TBI injury fellowship, uh, and uh, amputee research as well.
So where do our residents usually end up? Um, as you can see here, uh, last year, all three of our residents actually went interventional pain. The year before that, two did, while one went private practice. And then we kind of have a mixed match of, of pain, private care, or private acute inpatient rehab, um, palliative, and some spinal cord injury as well. And um, I know everyone's kind of you know worried about the money. So here's our, our, our salary. Um, as you can see here, kind of it says CS, but imagine it's just PGY1 to PGY4. Um, you know, we're living in Tampa, and I would say, you know, a fair amount of us kind of live more towards the just outside the city um, with a couple, you know, more of the single people living closer to the city inside. And it, it's enough to get you by for sure. Um, in addition to that, we have, you know, top notch health insurance, disability and life insurance as well with optional dental and vision. We also have something called the Temporary Employee Retirement Plan or the TERP. It's a seven and a half percent of your paycheck that replaces Social Security. So it kind of goes to a private retirement account that's for you and you can kind of set it up how you how you want. We also just recently got USMLE Step 3 and Comlex Level 3 reimbursement for up to $400. And there's also something called the Employee Assistance Program, kind of this resource to help you out if you know any life crises were to, were to come about. And so now to tell you how you're going to spend your money, we've got Dr. Wilhelm talking to you about life in Tampa. All right. I have the, uh, I have the fun time, but uh, Dr. Casey did touch on it a little bit, but I want to take you guys to the future. It's March 15th, 2024. You just found out you matched at USF in Tampa. One of the biggest and first questions you're going to ask is where do I live? And that's on the fifth bullet point down, but there really is a dichotomy. There's a single life, the folks who love being in the hustle bustle of things close to everything. Uh, not just the all of our sports teams that are in downtown and right outside downtown, but proximity to all the uh, fun, you know, little suburbs of downtown South Tampa versus those of us who are engaged in relationships married with one to four children. We sort of expand upon to the uh, northern or eastern part of Tampa and each have their pros and cons. The South Tampa, again, you're in the middle of everything. It's a great place to be. My fiance lived there before she moved up to North Tampa with me. Uh, I love staying with her. It's where all the bars are. It's where all the shopping is. It's where all the fun is. Uh, and you're also close to Tampa General, the Bay, the Harbor Island, Davis Island, all of that. Meanwhile, the married folks typically go up to North Tampa, which is in close proximity to both the VA and uh, Moffitt Cancer Center. But it is, again, more suburbs. It's a little bit more sleepy. It is growing, though. I have, that is something that Tampa is going to never stop doing at this point is grow. And um, with that being said, there's so much to do in Tampa. I want to harp on the beaches first. I'm an East Coast guy. I was born and raised in Jacksonville, but uh, I became a Gulf Coast guy real quick. And the beaches are gorgeous. If you want the touristy feel, you got clear water. If you want old, natural, pristine, untouched Florida, that's Fort DeSoto, where you can actually have your dogs off leashes, one of the only places in Florida with an open uh, dog beach. Otherwise, again, I already touched on the professional sports. There's even more minor league teams in the Yanks and the Phils. Uh, there's a the Blue Jays. There's a few down south in Manatee County. But the Tampa Bay metro area is large. It's, it's three, really three counties. You, you can sometimes get four in there if you want to squeak uh, Sarasota, Bradenton in there. There's so much to do. Uh, going you know, east or west, north or south, there's always something for you. Uh, big waterfront uh, community, obviously. Definitely a sportsman's paradise. So. Whether you're an outdoorsy or indoorsy person, uh, we got something for you here. We'd love to see you here. Four minutes remaining. Perfect. Next slide. All right. So a lot of our, you know, the biggest questions we get typically in these uh, sorts of settings is, yes, we have the uh, patient caps of 10 per with an in, as an intern and 14 per as a resident. We have 100% board pass rate over the past seven years since we've been logging that. Actually, it's eight or nine at this point, I think now. I think that's, we need to update that. Um, uh, the call that uh, Dr. Casey mentioned before, we only currently take call at the VA. We're taking call on the rehab, polytrauma, and this smaller chronic pain and post-separation um, uh, program during, the, uh, during nights, and then only SCI during weekend days. Um, as far as didactics, it's actually our job as chief residents to book all the didactics, okay? And uh, I, I can get folks in from Ipsen for Discord, uh, Allergan for Botox, uh, MERS for Zeomin. I can get anybody that I want. We have a very open policy with didactics and how we do things. We also have medical students almost all the time with us. If you love to teach, you're likely going to have a, a student with you as a PGY2 100% of the time. Next slide. And then some last questions. We knock 
numbers out of the park. Uh, I think Dr. Casey was really conservative with their peripheral joint and pain injections. Uh, I, I, I think I'm above about 100 or even almost 150 with uh, ultrasound guided in injections. Um, I'm up there with the uh, axial uh, spine injections too. I mean, our, our experiences are very, very thick. Um, as far as vacation, other than the ABPM and R maximum 30 days per year you can take, uh, we do allow the 20 days of regular vacation, 10, six and uh, five conference days per year. You are allowed moonlighting. Uh, just got to pass through Dr. McCarthy, but typically she gives thumbs up all the way around within reason, of course. And as chiefs, we also go to a board review course during the uh, last half of our uh, fourth of our fourth year. And that's paid for by the program. It's been virtual recently, um, but back in the day, it used to be in person. They fly us out there. So maybe we'll get back to that. That'd be nice. Um, these are all of our respective uh, pups and uh Mine is on the second from the top right. Michelle's is in the middle. And then I think we're on the question. Oh, that is a shameless plug for our Instagram. Uh, we're managing that now as chiefs. Um, other than that, any questions I can go ahead and take in the comment box real quick. I know we're running out of time. Two minutes left. Uh, as a sports med rotation, we do not have a dedicated sports med rotation. Um, in regards to sports med you know, fellowships and experiences, uh, I think connections is our number one, one of our number one strengths, I should say, in this program. Dr. McCarthy has somebody for something, uh, whether it's Buccaneers, Lightning, you know, whatever you want to go down that route for shadowing mostly. Uh, there are other ringside opportunities. There's a big MMA uh, uh, fandom here in Tampa. As for injection, hands-on injections, it really is that ultrasound MSK clinic with Dr. Obisi, where you're going to get likely 200, 250, maybe even 300 uh, ultrasound guided joint injections over a three or four month period with him. And we're doing everything from PRP to just regular steroids to visco, um, lots of experimental options since we're at the VA. And TRICARE covers PRP, so we can pretty much PRP whatever we want. But the NIDUS is on you to ask for the connections for those opportunities. Am I wrong, uh, Dr. Casey, or is that pretty much spot on? No, that's, that's spot on. I, I was interested in sports med initially talked to a lot of sports med fellows. They said the reason they did is because they had sideline coverage in residency, but they didn't get a lot of ultrasound guided injections. And like Dr. Wilhelm said, you, you'll probably knock out, I would say you probably knock out three, four, even 500, depending uh, just in our residency alone. So, you know, you'll get that experience. And if you want side sideline coverage, we have the connections to make that happen as well. And then we have uh, two questions regarding virtual uh, didactics. We have moved to entirely in-person didactics. It's really tough in our setting to uh, host virtual didactics. It, it, we just don't have the technology at our didactics room to, to really host that. Um, in regards to students rotating, yes, uh, we are VSAS. Uh, we started, we opened up applications on May 1st. So if you guys have, uh, if you are a three or have friends that are threes, tell them to look on VSAS. Uh, first, look on the website because that explains how to find us. We're actually under the Department of Neurology. So you will not find us under PM&R. You will find us under Neurology and then apply as soon as possible. Uh, we're full up. We do have cancellations. It doesn't hurt to continue to apply up to this date. And we do rolling, in, you know, rolling rotation missions when people cancel or drop out for whatever reasons. But um, as far as getting in touch with us uh, to rotate, I already, already touched on that. So Ravi, when you're four next year, man, look on May 1st, okay? As for IMGs, yes, we have had IMGs come through. Uh, technically, we have one with us right now, right? Isn't technically Will an IMG at that? Yep. 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 So we, we do. Need to USF, sorry, um, it okay. is the end of your presentation, but you are still welcome to stay on and answer questions within the chat. You can direct message any of the uh, chiefs if they're willing to stay on the call. If you want to drop your contact information in the chat as well, too, and. I